Welcome to this installment of Jeff's Garage. Today I'll be showing you how to do the timing belt and various seals on the 2JZ engine. Right here beside me is uh, my engine I pulled out of my car. It's a 2JZ GTE, the JDM spec VVTI engine. Um, obviously most of you guys doing the timing belt, you're not going to be pulling timing, um, the whole engine out of the car to do a timing belt and seals. But um, I have my car caught on fire about three weeks ago, as some of you know, and uh, well, the engine has to come out anyway, so I pulled it, and this will be an easier, um, you know, it'll make it easier for you to see everything, uh, since it won't be uh, covered up by the engine bay and the sides. You'll be able to get a better view of exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, keep in mind, this is a GTE engine, but the uh, various, well, I mean, the main difference is the GE engine will have the <clears throat> Manifold wrapped around the top of the engine. The GT obviously has manifold coming in from the right side of the front of the engine. Um, but uh, overall, there's not too much difference in everything else. On the GE engine, to start the job, you'll have to remove the whole top of the engine, the white pipe and throttle body. GT, you do not have to do that. Um, but uh, once you have the white pipe off the GE, the GE engine, you can um, just follow the rest of this guide. It will be the same the rest of the way through. Okay, the first thing um, on either engine, or well, for the GE engine, once you have the top white pipe and throttle body off, you'll remove the, um, the spark plug plastic cover. Uh, for the GE, they usually stop um, right where the oil cap is. The GT will go all the way to the end of the engine. So once you've done that, uh, you're ready to get, re um, get started on everything else. The first thing you'll want to do is uh, remove the accessory belt tensioner. It's this one right here. You will need a 14 millimeter socket and I would recommend a breaker bar such as this one. Uh, this one will do just fine. If you have a just a ratchet, a half inch drive, it'll be enough but it will take a lot more effort to pull it down because this does require a bit of force to hold the spring back while you pull off the belt. Okay, I found a 14 millimeter socket. Put it on the breaker bar. And you put it on the nut, on the tensioner, like this. Since the engine's out of the car, I might have to support it a bit so it doesn't rotate too much. And you'll turn the breaker bar to the right, and that will loosen the tension. You'll see this assembly move to the right and pull the tension off the belt. Once it's off, just one finger, slide off the belt, let go. That's it. Belt off. Very simple to do. Uh, most shops, just to change this belt, $50. So I just did it in five seconds. All right, the next step will be to pull off the uh, front plastic cover for the timing belt cover. Uh, there's the first one you already taken off the top. Uh, I didn't show that on video because I already taken it off. But um, there's also this cover and a lower cover here. You have to remove all of them to get gain access to the timing belt. Uh, I already started taking this one off. Um, there's a bolt. Move the camera. There's one bolt right there. Give you a distance to get some reference. One other bolt here. And the more difficult one to reach is here. It's actually behind a power steering pulley if you look like that. So you'll either have to remove the pulley first or um, get a good angle on that the bolt and with the Allen key to pull it out. Uh, keep in mind this is a 5mm Allen key for the these bolts here. Um, on the top of the engine, uh, for the GTE there are one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts. Oh, wait, wait, and add nine and ten to take off the spark plug cover. On the GE engine, there will only be um, these two and should only be uh, two more for the GE engine. Okay, and that's the main difference for the two engines in terms of removing the upper cover. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the last bolt here on the next to the pulley. Uh, 
another tip sometimes when you're using the Allen keys, um, obviously, you normally you use them uh, with the long end and the short end on the bolt so you get leverage. But sometimes you have to reach in the long end first and then the short end will be your handle. And obviously, that's going to make it harder to use. Um, a little trick just to get a extension or just a pipe, something that'll fit over the head and hold it on, and you'll be able to rotate that and give you a lot more leverage to help you pop off the bolts. So go ahead and stick this one in here. Stick that there. Cold bolt comes off very easily. Now this is a problem. Um, the pulley's in the way of this cover here. Just slowly work it out. Okay, there we go. The front cover comes off. Make sure to keep the bolts and don't lose them. Uh, I'll set the cover aside. Okay, something to keep in mind when you work on this engine, the most common socket sizes you will be using are will be uh, the 10, 12, and 14 millimeters. Okay, for the accessory belt tensioner here, there's the three bolts to remove and these are 12 millimeters. You go ahead and loosen them first, and then it should be hand tight to where you should be able to pull them off. Um, an important tip when pulling, uh, well actually more of when you're reinstalling everything after the whole job is done, do not drop anything into either side of these covers. Because what will happen is the bolt will get stuck between the belt and the pulley. There's these two pulleys up here, and down there will be the um, crankshaft pulley. If the bolt gets stuck anywhere in between these pulleys, it's going to chew up the belt. Obviously, if you drop a bolt into here anytime during the reinstallation process, you're going to have to pull everything off and do the whole job all over again. So keep that in mind when putting everything back together. All right, the next step will be to remove the timing belt tensioner. To do this, uh, you'll have two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the tensioner in. The tensioner is actually this piece right here in between the alternator and the crankshaft pulley. Uh, it's the one marked the NTN and there will be uh, two bolts on each side of the tensioner that you'll have to uh, undo to pull the tensioner off. Once you do that obviously you'll relieve the tension on the timing belt and you'll just be able to slide the belt off. Um, one tip uh, when you're taking off the tensioner uh, to give you a little more room to work with you can remove the alternator and the alternator bolt is here and right here and they are 14 millimeter, 14 millimeter bolts and you also have a um, the connector for the power wire right here you uh, undo that and the power wire will come off make sure before you do that uh, unplug the battery cable on your battery so uh, in case this touches some metal in your car you're not going to have sparks going everywhere and for uh, this is the uh, connector for the alternator for the charging um, you go ahead and there's a tab on the back of this. Just hold down, uh, squeeze on the tab and you should be able to pull the tab right out. Uh, if you've never taken this apart before, um, this they might have corrosion in there and make it a lot harder to pull off. Just hold the tab down and wiggle around and it'll come out. Okay, right here I've gone ahead and uh, removed the alternator. Um, and this will give you a better view of where the tensioner bolts are. The first one is obviously right there, and the second one is just hiding right behind it. I'm going to go ahead and do these, and then uh, I'll turn the camera back on when I'm done. Okay, right here I've removed the timing belt tensioner, and as you can see, the belt has plenty of play in it, and it's you can uh, get ready to pull it off, but don't do that just yet. You still have to remove the lower timing belt cover, and first you have to remove the crankshaft pulley. This is actually the pulley that... Uh, people have the most difficulty with. Even any any 2JZ, I mean on a Supra, SC300, you know, GS, IS, whatever it is. This one bolt here is the one that, I mean, people use, you know, one inch drive impact guns and it still doesn't come off.